Hey Amber Miners! Today, the mine has uncovered something kinda special. The other day, we found out some of our longtime friends were actually working on an official piece of Jurassic Media. The Jurassic World role-playing game and the Jurassic World Ultimate Encyclopedia. Finally, our beloved Jurassic franchise would have had an unofficially licensed RPG and lore book. However, much like the events of the 1993 incident, something went wrong and it was cancelled. Now, that's where we come in. To borrow some words from Sean Hammond... But it was not all so easy or so simple as it appeared. One seldom hears the true history of such events. What happened at the place where the world changed? How it began? What were the reasons? What was the cost? Our story begins not in 1989, but 30 years later in 2019. Just before the world changed. Wedge started out to create a fan-made RPG rule set for Jurassic Park under a D6 system. For those who don't know too much about the pen and pencil adventure genre of RPG systems, they are usually based around the rules centered around using a standard six-sided dice set or a 20-sided dice set. The most famous of these systems are called Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder. D&D and Pathfinder both use the D20 based system. To get back to our story, however, Wedge created this fan RPG rule set to go alongside the Exod Miniatures game that was being advertised at the time, which in the end just disappeared. He would eventually produce two different versions while being in and out of the hospital that year. Here is the original cover artwork that he had created for his rule set. There was a second version produced, which was much more printer-friendly, black and white version. As he was working on a third edition, he was approached to write an official Jurassic World themed rule set. The RPG would be designed to be a rule set that would allow a game master and other players to play adventures set within the Jurassic franchise. It featured the expanded upon details written by Wedge with the aid of his friends over at Jurassicpedia. It featured extensive character profiles to ensure that the GM or Game Master would properly portray them. This would also include a fleshed out bestiary for the dinosaurs to make them feel as both authentic animals and deadly monsters, exactly as Crichton and Spielberg set out to do with the original film as well as a campaign book about Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna that would be heavily based off the natural history of Skull Island book from Peter Jackson's King Kong from way back in 2005. Now, onto the main story. Most major franchises have their own encyclopedias or lore books that detail the entire story of the given franchise. Star Wars is the most notable example as it had lore books in an expanded universe that spans almost 50 years. As we all know, Jurassic just never really got this treatment for some reason. In December of 2020, Jurassic Korea wrote and released an unofficial Jurassic World The Exhibition ebook. During this process, he developed a good friendship with a guy named Neon. However, it didn't translate into writing an official book as they didn't get any approval from Universal Pictures or Amblin to do so. Wedge saw the ebook on Twitter and in turn contacted Korea. From there, they became best friends. After releasing the encyclopedia, Korea thought about writing an encyclopedia ebook that would chronicle the entire Jurassic canon. It was a given as fans had been pining for canon encyclopedias and canon material for many, many years. From then on, Wedge and Korea started to work on it. As time went on, the two would put together their own little team 
and on February 18th, 2021, they officially started the project called the Jurassic World, the ultimate encyclopedia project. The team members are the following. While working on this, they consulted a lot of tremendously talented and knowledgeable fans, such as Jurassic Time, Felipe Humboldt, Dinos Forever of Jurassicpedia, Jurassic Outpost, as well as an actual paleontologist, Ethan Storer. They also used Jurassicpedia as a sort of a baseline, as Wedge was also working as a contributor to it and as a resource. It was also the best one available as it had no nonsensical headcanons, but clearly outlined logical assumptions based on facts, as well as Jurassic Outpost's Jurassic Wiki. They also closely worked alongside with Chaos Theorem members Jack Ewens and Chris Pugh. Both of them gave the team a lot of valuable advice, which they still hold dearly and truly appreciated. This dream team then allowed their artist team to create a wide array of renderings for dinosaurs, both seen and unseen. Specifically of note, our beloved Segisaurus, as well as the Proceratosaurus. This art department had developed renders for pretty much all of the interpretations and designs from all across the franchise for all the different species. Some of them have been showcased through Red Raptors Engine Database Google Drive and Ghost Knights YouTube channel videos. Currently, the JWRPG team has more than 206 flora and fauna renderings, and despite the ultimate cancellation, they are continuing to create more. So, the next major task for the team was to catch the attention of Universal Pictures and Amblin Entertainment. However, just like other major studios, they don't just allow for unsolicited pitches to be sent to them. No, 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 no. The studio must request things from the inside. With a project that was effectively finished and in the process of being made into a PDF, the project was simply put on hold. However, despite all hope seemingly being lost, there still was hope. Wedge had developed a close relationship with Exod Games and Exod Studio. They were in the midst of developing and releasing a miniatures game for the Jurassic World franchise. He was running their official Discord server, as well as acting as an unofficial messenger for the company, alongside a handful of other moderators. During this time, Wedge had mentioned how he wrote a Jurassic Park fan-made RPG a few years back in anticipation for their game. This was the ultimate foot in the door and they had asked for a copy and a few days later, they messaged him asking if he was interested in joining their team to write the rulebook for the official Jurassic World role-playing game. It was going to be a sister project alongside the miniatures game. Wedge also shared additional ideas for supporting both the miniature game and the RPG with different expansions. While working on the game, Wedge saw an opportunity to revive the Encyclopedia project and reshape it into a supplementary of lore books and source books. These source books would have served as the foundation for a building a single cohesive canon for the Jurassic franchise. One thing us fans have been begging for for years. He took after the Old West End Games Star Wars RPG approach, where they released a variety of source books that expanded upon the Star Wars universe, the movies, and the novels. Those RPG books effectively formed the backbone of the old expanded universe for the Star Wars franchise, and it would not have been as extensive or as detailed as we know it today without it. He pitched the idea to Universal and it got their approval, as well as part of the miniatures project. The RPG was going to feature the following. A Jurassic World RPG rulebook with a pre-made adventure written by Wedge with guidance from the Chaos Theorem team on the end of the amalgam testing, also known as the Project Regenesis event, that took place on Isla Sorna in 1999, just before the events of Jurassic Park 3. 
a Jurassic franchise lore book that was streamlined version of the encyclopedia with added stats and elements specific to an RPG. An adventure book that was going to take place in a post-fallen kingdom world that was going to establish dino trackers and the Department of Prehistoric Wildlife. It was also going to feature the origins of Sonia Santos and explain how she got her start in the criminal world and how she started on building her empire. A natural history of Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna, heavily inspired by the old Skull Island book for King Kong 2005. It was designed to be a small book that was going to fully flesh out Isla Nublar and Isla Sorna as RPG settings so that the GM, now replaced with DM or Dinosaur Master, can write their own original stories and make them fit snugly into the Jurassic universe. What was also in development and being discussed was a separate Camp Cretaceous campaign this was going to effectively flesh out the world of Camp Cretaceous, as well as serve as a simplified version of the rules to play with young children, kind of like a beginner's guide to the world of role-playing games. Kids would have portrayed themselves as campers in Jurassic World with the objective to find a way off Isla Nublar. An adventure based on Kayla working for Biosyn and transporting Sorna Raptors to them in their longest flight of her life, an adventure taking place in the savannah of Africa. In an adventure about a group of hunters stranded on Isla Sorna during the events of the Lost World, an adventure based off the incident up north, and engine agents investigating sightings of the Hoopia in South America, among a handful of other smaller anthology-style stories. Separate adventure books that were going to be canon remakes of Trespasser and Jurassic Park the Game. These two, especially Trespasser, were important elements of the Jurassic mythos for them, and in all honesty, really helped shape the way we look at Jurassic. They wanted to do right by them and tell a story based on something they made was seemingly inspiring. Hell, the original ideas Wedge had for the RPG would have basically been like it was just Traspesser the role-playing game rather than Jurassic World. For the sake of time, I'll spare you some of the details for a future video. However, rest assured, they spared no expense in order to bring you the best Jurassic adventure possible. Wedge even took some paleontology classes in order to guarantee that he was going to bring you the most accurate dinosaur information. Now, with all of this amazing stuff being said, how did this project get cancelled? Simply put, money. Or rather, a lack thereof. Exod and the entire tabletop slash board game industry as a whole got hit extremely hard by COVID as manufacturing prices skyrocketed and shipping prices became borderline extortionist. This was also coupled with how expansive the Kickstarter truly was. They simply bled money. They tried to salvage the project, but it just didn't work. They eventually just disappeared. Because they had worked through Zod, they never got direct contact with Universal, and thus, no actual way to save the project. They tried to contact Universal again, but it just didn't work. I feel that this whole situation deserves a quote from Peter Ludlow that we here at the Amber Mine have gotten used to quite a bit in the last year. And so the facility sits unused, unfinished, when it could be completed and ready to receive visitors in less than a month. Not all hope is lost, however. Wedge and Korea have been working towards reviving the project. The duo have started a small indie game publishing company where they plan to publish a generic version of the game through an original story called Clonosaurus. The original Jurassic World project will be succeeded via Minis Game and an RPG, with Minis Game releasing first. Why release it under a generic brand though? The goal is to make Clonosaurus a popular enough game so that either Universal contacts them again to release a Jurassic World edition of their game as well as revive the original Jurassic World RPG and canon books, or work through another, more experienced company to finish the game. They will be working hard to bring this project back from extinction, and finally, 
give the fans something that they have been wanting for over 20 years. Now, I'd like to end this with something that I wrote up on Twitter discussing the matter. We, as a Jurassic community, have embraced this idea. We not only want this, but this would answer a very specific need that this community has been crying out for. Universal, please, bring this project back online. Let's open the gates once more. Ember Miners, thanks for watching today's video. Be sure to click the subscribe button on your way out and click the bell icon to be notified of our videos when we upload them. Consider leaving a like on this video so we know that you enjoyed it. Leave a comment about content that you would like to see come to this channel, and be sure to check the description for links to our Discord if you would like to talk to the team more directly. Check out our Patreon if you would like to help fund the team and its upcoming projects. Remember, this is a fan group reviewing the depths of our favorite franchise, and that we are in no way affiliated with the groups and companies that own them. Be sure to support Universal Studios and Amblin Entertainment. This has been an Ambermind production. Thank you for mining with us.